For this video, what I want to do is show you some probability rules with two-way tables. And for this, I'm going to go over several different rules, including probabilities involving given, and, or, and the complement. All right, so what we have is the table below shows the results of a survey that asked whether the person is involved in charity work. The person's gender was recorded as well as their response, frequently, sometimes, or never. A person is randomly selected from the sample, and we want to find the probability of each of these events occurring. Okay, so what we have here is we are given our table with all of the information. In order to find probabilities, remember that we need to know the totals. So we're going to have to find both the row totals and the column total. To find the row total, what we are going to do is go across the row for males and we're going to add 152 plus 187 plus 432 and this gives us a total of 771 males were surveyed. For the females, we would add 127 plus 207 plus 445, which gives us a total of 779 females. For those that responded frequently, we would add the 152 plus 127, and we see that 279 of our respondents responded frequently. 187 plus 207 gives us a total of 394 responded sometimes. And then the last one is the never. So if I add these together, we get 800 and, I almost wrote the wrong number, 877. And then to find the total total, to figure out how many total people were surveyed, I can either take the column totals, or sorry, the row totals and add them together to get a column total, or I could take um, the column totals and add them together. So I can either do 771 plus 779, which gives me 1550, or I can do 279 plus 394 plus 877. Remember with probabilities, we have to know totals, so it's important to be able to find the marginal totals. That's what these are called. These are the margins. And some of our questions will end up having the result of the 1550 as the bottom number, depending upon if we're talking about the entire sample, or we may use just the row totals or the column totals. And then at the end of the five that I have listed out, I, am, I have a couple of you try problems where you can try a couple on your own. All right, so what we have first is we're trying to find the probability of selecting a male given that they responded sometimes. Okay, so this is an example of a given probability. So we are given that they sometimes volunteer. So we're talking specifically about this column right here. So anytime you are given something, we are looking at specifically that column or that row. So we have a total of 394 people that responded sometimes. And of those, 187 of them are males. So we would have 187 over 394. Now it is perfectly acceptable in probabilities to leave your answer as a fraction, or you could take into your calculator and do 187 divided by 394 and get a total of 0.4746, or you could say 47.46%. So all three of those are acceptable ways of writing your answer. All right, next question. For this one, it asks, find the probability of selecting a female who never volunteers. So basically what we're looking for on this one is that the person was a female and they responded never. So for this one, we are looking at the overlap of female and never. So we can see that 445 of all of our people were females and responded never. And then I would put this over 1550. And again, it is acceptable to leave your answer in this manner. You could also reduce this down to 89 over 310. Or you could write it as a decimal. Or again, 
you could write it as a percent. It all just depends on how the question is posed and what type of answer format makes the most sense for the problem. All right, for the next one, we're going to use the complement rule. We're looking for the probability of not responding with never. Okay, for this one, the easiest way to do this, and there's actually two ways that you could do this one. Since there's only two other options, frequently or sometimes, those would be the two that you could use. So I could add the 279 plus the 394, or I could use the complement rule and say one minus the probability of responding never. So that's the rule that I'm going to use. There is another way of getting this answer though. Okay, so the probability of responding never is if we look at the never column, we see that there was a total of 877 of our respondents that said never out of a total of 1550. Okay, and if I simplify this, if I do 1 minus 877 over 1550, I get a total of 673 out of 1550. Or, like I said, I could have gotten the same thing by taking the 279 plus the 394. The 9 and the 4 would give me 13. And then if I carry that, I get 8 plus 9, which is 17. And then if I carry the 1, I get 673. So either way would give me the same answer. Or we could write this as approximately 0.4342. And again, you could write it as a percentage if you wish. The next one that we have is the probability of selecting a male or someone who responds sometimes. So for this one, because it is an or probability, remember that there are two possibilities. The two possibilities are that they are independent of each other or mutually exclusive from each other. And mutually exclusive means they cannot occur at the same time or they are inclusive, which means they can occur at the same time. So if we look up at our chart, we can see that there are some males that responded with the word sometimes. So for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to use the rule, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both A and B. Okay, so if we go back up here, we can see that of our males, we had a total of 771 males. So we would do 771 divided by 1550. So that would be our probability of being male. And then we would add to it the probability of answering sometimes. So we can see that we had a total of 394 people that responded with sometimes over 1550. And then we would subtract the overlap, so the and part. The and part would be the 187. So we would subtract 187 over 1550. And then we would just simplify this. So we would do 771 plus 394 minus 187 using the probability rule. You could also use the total males plus the females that responded. Um, if you do this, it might be a little bit easier because that would give you 971. But you do get, and sorry, I'm trying to look at the right place on my paper, 978. I just did the math wrong in my um, head, and then I realized I said that wrong. Okay, so this res um, answer is 978 over 1550. Okay, this does simplify down to 489 over 775, or you could write it as 0 0.6310 or 63.1%. All of those are acceptable formats again. All right, and then the last one that I'm going to do with you, and then I'm going to have you pause the video and try on your own, is what is the probability of selecting someone who responded sometimes or never? So since there wasn't anybody that could respond yes to both of these, 
These would be mutually exclusive. So for this one, we would just use the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B, and you don't have to subtract the overlap. Okay, the probability of A, we just found that sometimes was the 394 out of 1550. And then if I go back up, we can see that responded never would be the 877. So we're using the 394 and the 877. And then we would just add those together. So once we add those together, we get 1271 out of 1550, which ends up being exactly 0.82 or 82%. Okay, so what I want you to do now is to try a couple on your own. I went ahead and did the chart for you. It's the same exact information that I was using above, but I just made it a little bit cleaner for you to be able to answer the questions. I do have the row totals and the column totals for you. So go ahead and try these two. After you have tried them, then resume watching and I will go over the answer with you. All right, for the first one, now that you're back, what I'm going to do is we're gonna find the probability of selecting a female or someone who responded frequently. Okay, again, because this is the one where there is an overlap, we do have females that responded frequently. Okay, so we would have to subtract out that overlap. So the first thing that we would do is find the probability of being female, which is 779 over 1550, plus the probability of answering frequently, which would be the 279 divided by 1550. And then we would subtract out the overlap of 127 divided by 1550, because we included the 127 in both the female count and the frequently count. So if we simplify this, we end up with 931 over 1550. And if we simplify this to a decimal, we get approximately 0 0.6006 or 60.06%. So the probability of selecting someone who was either a female or they responded frequently would be 60.06%. And then the last one that I asked you to try is find the probability of selecting a person who responds never given that that person was a female. So this time we are told that the person is a female, so I would look at this row. And so it has to be a female, we're omitting the males. So we would have 779 as our denominator. The never would be the 445. So we would put 445 over 779, and if we simplify this, we would get 0.5712 or 57.12%. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with two-way tables, and there's a lot of different types of probability that you can find. It's really important that you know the different probability rules, and so hopefully I was able to clarify some of those issues for you. You do always have to be able to find the both the row totals and the column totals in order to find the probabilities. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.